Life Church kids, it's Brother Dave once again, welcoming you to another children's church lesson. Uh, by video, unfortunately, we still can't be together, but we're praying that pretty soon we'll be able to all come together. I hope that you are wishing that you could come to church, that you can come to children's church. We miss you, and I hope you miss us too. We're going to do another lesson today. And I hope that you get a lot out of it. We're going to do a little bit of a departure from our normal, uh, from our normal course of lessons where we were talking about the Old Testament, talking about Moses and the Israelites. And because this past week was Easter Sunday, and there's a whole bunch of other things that go along with it, a whole bunch of other events. And... I want to take some time and give you a lesson on that. And then next week, we will return to our normal uh, lesson, uh, our course of lessons on Moses and the children of Israel. Now, before, I, uh, before we get started with the lesson, I hope that you got a chance to look at a video that we posted. Now, it's on Life Church Kids. And if you're not a member of Life Church Kids, if, you're, if your parents are not... Members of that, go ahead and ask them to contact either Sister Donna, Sister Karen, Sister Faith, or myself, and we can set you up to be on Life Church uh, Kids on Facebook, the Life Church Kids Facebook page. Now, for those of you who haven't already seen it, do you remember Yoli Pacheco? She was the woman that, she was the ventriloquist, and she has all sorts of, of uh little friends that she has with her. And she posted a video to the Life Church Kids website. I hope that you got a chance to see it. But if you didn't, once again, go ahead and ask your, ask your parents to, uh, to get on Life Church Kids so that you can see the video. It's a great video. I love Yoli. I love Yoli. I love the work that she does. It's always entertaining. And it's always a learning experience that you learn about Jesus while being entertained by her by her friends. Now, I want to get into the lesson, but before we do, let's start with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless this time. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you once again, Lord, for this time that we can teach. Even though it's it's by video, Lord, I I, I know that your spirit will move. And I know that you will move upon the young people in this church, that you, will, that you will teach them the things that they need to know. Lord, let everything that we do tonight be about you, and let it be for your glory and for your glory alone. Father, I ask you that you would put a, uh, a longing in each heart, that they would be able to come back to children's church, that we can all gather together with our friends, and that we can learn about you in a live setting. But until then, Lord, I ask you to bless this time. Now, Lord, if there are any needs out in the congregation, if, if, any of, if any of our Life Church kids have a need or their families have a need, I ask you that you would, that you would answer those needs. Lord, if it's, uh, if it's sickness in the family, I ask for your healing. If there are financial problems, I ask for you to provide because, Lord, you are our provider. And we thank you and we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor for all that you do and for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I put up a lot of terms up here. and These are things that you may have heard about. Last Supper, Good Friday, Passover, Easter, the Resurrection, Easter Bunny, Candy, Easter. What, what's, what's that all about? What is that all about? Well, I can tell you this much. Do you love do you love Easter eggs? Do you love candy? I do. But that's not what Easter's about. That's not what it's about. And there's nothing wrong, okay? There's nothing wrong with eating an Easter egg. There's nothing wrong with dying Easter eggs. I hope you got a chance to do that. I hope you got a lot of candy in your Easter basket. But that's not what Easter is really about. And I'm sorry, I know y'all love the Easter Bunny, but that's not what Easter's about either. 
What is Easter about? It's about Jesus. Now let me go back to you. If you remember from some of our lessons, do you remember when the Israelites were coming out of the land of Egypt? And this was actually before they came out of the land of Egypt. And God sent plagues upon Egypt. Do you remember how many? Do you remember how many? Ten. Ten plagues. And one of the plagues, it was the last plague. And God said, I am going to come through the land of Egypt. And I'm going to kill the firstborn of every family. What a horrible thing. But he said, here's how you get out of that. I want you to take a lamb. And I want you to kill the lamb and take the blood. And if this, if this is the doorpost of your home, if this is the entrance to your home, you put blood here. You put blood here. You put blood here. It's almost in the shape of a cross, isn't it? And see, that cross ties in. Because that's, that's what... Uh, uh, that's very central, and I didn't put this on here, but uh, let me put another word up here. Crucifixion. That's a big old fancy word. <clears throat> but crucifixion, and those of you who speak Spanish, you might like cruz, Spanish for cross. And so that's what crucifixion, it was about putting Jesus on the cross. Now, but let me back up. Let me let me back up. And if you remember, though, that uh, with the blood on the door, and God said, I will cause the death angel to pass over you. And that's why they called the celebration Passover. And it was during what they considered the first month. Now, when we... Uh, when we start our year, we start it in January, January, February, March, April, and so on. But back then, they didn't start the year in January like we do. They started the year at the first of spring. Do you remember when the first of spring is? It's usually in mid to late March. And they didn't, tell, they didn't uh, have a calendar like we have. They told time by the, by the phases of the moon. And so... When there was a uh, full moon, or actually it was, I guess it was a new moon, was the start of the month. The new moon is when there's no moon up in the sky. And that was when they started the month. And so the start of the month was what we consider the start of spring. Or that was the start of the year, rather. That's the first month of the year. And Passover happened after the first full moon. So about two weeks after the start of the year. And that's when Passover was. And the death angel passed over any house that had the blood. And if anybody was inside and they were in the house, they were safe. Their children were safe. God would not take their firstborn. There's so much there that I can tell you about. About uh, like the way Jesus' blood covers us. And we don't... Uh, we don't have to worry about death when Jesus' blood is covering us. But that's what Passover was. And then what about the Last Supper? The Last Supper was Jesus was actually having a Passover meal with his disciples. And that was part of the Passover celebration is that they would have a meal. They would observe it every year. And they would have a meal. And they would gather all the family together. And they'd have this great meal and a great celebration. And they did that every year. And so Jesus was keeping the Passover. And he gathered his disciples into an upper room. And it's what they called the Last Supper. Because Jesus knew it was getting close for him to die. He knew that he was going to die. He didn't want to, but he knew that that was God's plan. Why? Because Jesus was the sacrifice for our sins. Back in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice a lamb. And they, if you remember from the lessons past, and it was just a bloody affair. 
and they, they put blood everywhere and and the uh, the sacrificed lamb would cause their sins to be pushed forward another year and the next year they'd have to do it again and God said I don't delight in the sacrifice of animals I want one final sacrifice for sin and he loved us so much that he sent his own son to be that sacrifice Jesus lived a perfect life he never did anything wrong he never sinned I know it's hard for some of us to believe some of us we can't go a day without sinning without sinning but Jesus lived his whole life without sin he was born without sin and so he became that perfect lamb and God it was God's intent to sacrifice his own son Jesus so that we would not have to die from our sins and so it was so Jesus was celebrating the Passover with his disciples and that was what they call the Last Supper and he gathered all of his disciples do you remember how many there were I know we haven't covered this in a lesson but some of you have been in my Sunday school classes and you should know how many disciples there were there were 12 disciples now I'm not gonna sit here and try to name them all for you but there were 12 and some of them were really close to Jesus there were three that were very close to Jesus their names were Peter James and John and they were very uh, close friends with Jesus more so than the other nine now there was another guy and his name was Judas now Judas was trouble because it was Judas who decided that you know this has gone far enough I don't know if it was because uh, Jesus rebuked him a woman had poured oil on his uh, on his feet and anointed him and Jesus said well, why is she wasting all that money and Jesus says leave her alone now maybe he was hurt because of that I don't know but the Bible says that Satan put it into Judas's heart to betray Jesus do you know what betrayal is do you know what it means to betray somebody it means that you pretend that you're their friend you pretend that you love them you pretend that you like them but inside you got it in your mind I'm gonna hurt them and that's what they do and it, it really hurts when somebody betrays you you trust them you think that they're your friend and it turns out they're not your friend and instead they're your enemy and they betray you and that hurt Jesus very much but uh, what happened was that in the Last Supper they were all gathered around the table and Jesus knew what was going to happen you see God would tell Jesus things God would tell him things that were gonna happen in the future and so Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him and he told Judas what here you know go ahead whatever you do do quickly and Judas left and everybody thought well he's just going out to get some supplies or he's gonna give something to the poor but what he was doing was you see the the priests didn't like Jesus they had this system set up that they did their church and it was very uh, it was very financially rewarding to them they made a lot of money off of it and Jesus came in and said no oh, you can't do that that's not God's way and so they got mad at him and Jesus upset that whole system and he said that I am the Son of God and they said, oh, you can't say that that's blasphemy blasphemy is saying something against God and they said you can't say that but Jesus said it's the truth I am the Son of God and they got so angry at him that they decided that the only way that they could that they could settle this was to kill him and Judas was just that person and so Judas went off and he met with the priests and he met with the soldiers and they grabbed uh, they uh, came with Judas and Judas said I know where he's going to be right now he's with his disciples and he's uh, having the Passover meal but afterward he's going to go to this garden called Gethsemane he said uh, Judas told them he said they uh, they uh, Jesus goes there to pray and he'll be alone there and you'll be able to arrest him and take him out of the way without causing a, 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 a riot among the people and so that's what happened 
<clears throat> and just as Judas said, after the Last Supper, uh, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go and let's, let's leave. And he was planning to go to the Garden of Gethsemane, and that's exactly where he went. And some of his disciples, he said, here, you stay here. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he went off a little farther. And then he said to Peter, James, and John, you guys stay here and pray. I'm going to go even farther, and I'm going to pray to God. Now, Jesus knew what was going to happen that night. And he said he was praying. He was praying very earnestly, and he said, God, if this be possible, let this pass from me. Please, God, if, it, if it's possible, don't let this happen, because he didn't want to. He knew that he had to, and he knew that he... You know, he wanted to do God's will. So even though his flesh didn't want to, he knew inside that he had to do this. But he said, God, if, if, if it's possible to do it without me going through all this, please let this pass from me. But, he said, not my will, but yours be done. In other words, I don't want to do what I want. I want to do, God, what you want. And I want what you want more than what I want. God's pleased with that attitude. When we say, you know what, God? I could do things that make me happy. Or I could do things that make you happy. And I prefer to do the things that make you happy. God's pleased with that. And the funny thing is that when we, when we do that, pretty soon we become happy with the things that make God happy. And we don't want to do those things things that we wanted to do anymore. And so Jesus had that relationship with God. That was, God was his father. And so he said, you know, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And after he prayed, and he was praying so hard that the sweat began to roll down his face. And the sweat was so thick the Bible said it's like it was like drops of blood. It was so thick. Now, some people say that he was sweating blood. No, he wasn't. That's not what the Bible says. But he was uh, sweating. His sweat was thick like blood. And finally, here comes Judas. And he had their soldiers with him. And he came to Jesus. He knew exactly where Jesus would be. And he came to Jesus. And he greeted Jesus. Now, they had a different way of greeting people back then. They greeted each other with a kiss, not a kiss on the lips. They, they would just move on this side, move on this side, on the cheeks or close to the cheeks. And he, he did that with Jesus. And Jesus said, Judas, you're going to betray me with a kiss? And the soldiers came up and said, we're looking for Jesus. Now, Jesus could have lied and said, uh, he, he went that way, but he didn't because Jesus didn't lie. And even though he knew what was coming, he said, I'm the one that you're looking for. And they arrested him and they took him. And it was a horrible scene because they beat him. They accused him of many things. And all lies, they lied about him. And yet he was willing to do that for us. And he was willing to be beat. And they, they, they made him all bloody and beat up. And yet he was willing to go through that for us. And finally, the, the uh, death, uh, the way of death that they did was what they called crucifixion. We've seen crosses. And what they would do is they would put people on the cross, and it was a terrible, terrible way to die. And I'm not going to go into details on that because some of you are too young to handle this. But that's what they call the crucifixion, was when they put Jesus on the cross. <clears throat> they, uh, they said, after a while, he, he was on the cross for, oh, about three hours or so. And it got toward evening, and they said, well, you know, it's getting toward the Sabbath day. we got to make sure we get them all off the cross. And people think, well, because the Sabbath day started at sundown on Friday and went through sundown on Saturday. That's how their Sabbath went. We, call, we go to church on Sunday. We observe Sunday. 
but the Jews observed Sabbath. And so they that's why we call it Good Friday, because that was the, or they say that that was the day. It, it really wasn't, but that's been the tradition. And so that's why we call, that's why we celebrate Good Friday. And if, you, if some of you got a chance to see, we had a service on Friday night. And we were talking about the blood of Jesus. And we were talking about, you see, Jesus had to die. Why? Because he was the sacrifice for sin. Because he knew that we needed to have our sins forgiven. Because our sins separate us from God. But with our sins forgiven, we can now be in the presence of God. We can now have a friendship with God because of Jesus. And so that's why they call that's why they call it Good Friday. Now the Bible says, and Jesus said this himself, they were asking Jesus about, about what are you going to do? And he said, if you destroy my body. In three days, I'm going to raise it up. As it turned out, you see, they killed Jesus. And they put him in a tomb. They didn't bury people like we do. They, they, they would find a cave, and they would put them in there. And they, uh, the, uh, uh, the priests who arranged to have Jesus killed, they said, you know, he said that he would come back to life. And so what we want you to do, and they begged the Roman governor, and they said, please put a stone in front of this tomb and put soldiers to stand watch because we don't want his disciples to come in and steal his body and then say, he's risen, he's risen. And so the governor said, whatever, you go ahead and do what you want. And they put, the, they put this massive stone in front of the tomb, in front of the grave. And they put soldiers there, Roman soldiers, to watch over it just to make sure that nobody could come in and steal Jesus' body. But on the first day of the week, now, the first day of the week was the day after the Sabbath day. It was in the morning. And it was what we know as Sunday morning. And there came a great earthquake. And the soldiers were frightened. And all of a sudden, the big stone rolled away. Now, the soldiers weren't there anymore. They, they were too scared. And Jesus came walking out of the grave. He came walking out of the tomb. You see, Jesus said, you destroy my body? In three days, I'm going to raise it up. Death couldn't hold Jesus because Jesus had no sin on him. And so death couldn't hold him. And after three days, he was alive again. Now you say, that can't happen. With God, nothing is impossible. God did this. You see, because Jesus, he couldn't stay dead. He had to defeat death. And by defeating death, he completely banished death from us. Death is not a problem for us anymore. If we're forgiven, then we death has no more power over us. And Jesus came out of that grave. Now, we know the day as Easter, but I prefer the resurrection. What does resurrection mean? It means coming back to life. Coming up out of that grave. Coming out of that tomb. And that's what Jesus did. Death can't beat Jesus. Jesus is more powerful than death. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. That's why we celebrate. That's what it's all about. It's about Jesus. Jesus Jesus defeated death. Death has no power over Jesus. Now, the disciples were freaked out about all this. They had seen one of their 12 betray Jesus. 
They'd seen Jesus be arrested. Now, they, they thought that people were going to make Jesus a king. Instead, Jesus was arrested. And in less than 24 hours, he went from this, this going to be the king to dead. They didn't know what was going to happen. And they were afraid. They were in their homes, and they were afraid that those soldiers that arrested Jesus were going to come and arrest them too. Now, on the first day of the week, on what we know as Sunday morning, a woman named Mary. Now, this was not the mother of Jesus. This was another woman named Mary. And she came, and she came to anoint Jesus' body. And that's what they used to do. They used to prepare a body for burial and they would put all these spices on their body to keep them from stinking. And they didn't have a chance to do the proper, uh, proper anointing before because they were in such a rush to get Jesus off the cross and get him into the tomb before the Sabbath day. And so she came the first day of the week, early in the morning. And she got there. And the stone was rolled away. And the soldiers weren't there. And she looked inside, and she didn't see the body of Jesus. He was gone. And she left, and she went back to where the disciples were. And I'm sure she, she would have gone and, and pounded on the door. <laughs> open up! Open up! I got news! I got news! You're not going to believe this! Jesus is gone! He's gone! He's gone! Open up! And they opened, and she told them what she'd found. And Peter and John took off running to the tomb. John ran faster. He was younger. Peter was an older guy. John got there first, and he looked. Oh. And Peter, he, he, he comes there. He's not going to stop and look. He went right in. And then John went in. There was no body. No body there. Nobody there. Jesus' body was gone. And they went, wow. What is this thing? You see, they couldn't remember that Jesus said, I'm going to rise again after three days. They didn't remember that. And they went back to, to their house. But Mary stayed there. She couldn't process. She couldn't figure out what was going on. And she just stayed there crying. And all of a sudden, someone came up behind her. And he said, who are you looking for? She thought it was the, the guy who took care of the garden. And she said, sir, if you've taken him away, please tell me where he is. And we'll come and get him and, and bury him somewhere else. She didn't realize that it was Jesus. And he said, Mary. Oh, I'm sure you could have seen her eyes. Oh, big as saucers. It's Jesus. And she turned and she said, teacher. And he said to Mary, don't touch me, but go back and tell the disciples that I've risen again. And I will meet them. Jesus was alive. That's what resurrection means. It means that you were dead. And you came back to life. <clears throat> Why? Because Jesus defeated death. Death couldn't hold him. Praise God. Death couldn't hold him. Praise God. Jesus is more powerful than death. Death being the punishment for our sins. And so Jesus is more powerful than our sins. And we don't have to sacrifice the blood of animals anymore. But instead, we come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I am so sorry and I will not do them anymore. Do you remember from last week that I showed you that I guess it was been two weeks ago that I showed you. It was like you're walking away from God. And then you say, what am I doing? And you turn around 
and you walk back toward God. You stop doing what you were doing and you start doing the right thing, walking back toward God. We repent. We say that we're sorry for our sins and then we stop doing them. That's what repentance is. And God is pleased with our repentance and he forgives our sins. And he says, I will never hold those sins against you anymore. You're completely free from your sins. If you turn to Jesus, if you say, Jesus, come into my heart and take control of my life. Jesus, I'm sorry for my sinning, and I'm going to stop doing it. Now, what happens if you go back to it? Well, you just go back to God and you say, Jesus, please forgive me. You see, some people say, well, oh, you, you kept on sinning. You, you can't be a Christian. You can't be right. But you see, God said that if someone sins against you 70 times, 7 times in a day, 490 times in a day, you forgive them. Because if we forgive people, then God will forgive us. And no matter how many times we go to God with a true heart, now God can read your heart. He understands if you're faking it, he knows it. He's not going to forgive your sins. But if you go to God with a true heart and say, you know what, God, I am so sorry I messed up. Forgive me of my sins. And he will. Why? Because of Jesus. Because Jesus defeated death. Everything that we've talked about in the Old Testament has been pointing to Jesus. Everything that we talk about, the blood, the wandering, and all that, people doing wrong, it all points to Jesus because Jesus wants to deliver us from that. The, the uh, children of, e of Israel were slaves in Egypt, and God made them free. We are slaves to sin. But Jesus makes us free. We don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. We can have victory over sin, just like Jesus had victory over death. I want to invite you today. If you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, if you haven't asked Jesus to take control of your lives, I want to invite you to do that right now. Pray with me, will you? Father God, I have sinned. I've done things that you didn't want me to do. I've disobeyed you. I thank you, though, for Jesus. I thank you for providing your own son as a sacrifice for my sins. And he defeated death. And he defeated sin. So that sin would no longer have a hold on me. Father, the things that I have done wrong, I am sorry for. And I ask you to wash me clean. I ask you to forgive me my sins. And I will do whatever I can not to do those sins anymore. Father, I ask you to, to fill my heart with Jesus. And I want to make him the Lord of my life. I want Jesus to have control of my life. So that I can walk with you. So that I can be friends with you. And one day, I will spend forever with you. That's my desire. And Father, because of Jesus, I know that you will grant these things that I ask you. And I thank you for them. Come into my heart and make me one of yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you were serious about it, if you were sincere... And God knows if you are faking or if you are true. Jesus has come into your life and you are a new creature. You're, you're a whole new person. And where you were separated from God by your sins, now you are no longer separated from God. And Jesus now lives in you. And you are a child of God. I thank you for listening to this video. I thank you for listening to this lesson. And if you chose not to pray that prayer today, I ask you to pray that prayer, whether it be tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Pray that prayer because God wants to take death away from you and he wants to give you life.
but it's only through Jesus. I hope you'll join us again next week. We'll be doing another video series. Hopefully we'll be able to, this will only be a few more weeks that we'll have to do this, and then we'll be able to come back together and have live lessons. And I look forward to that day. I hope you are too. God bless you, and God be with you. Amen.